net, in my opinion. As I said, just a smear on what has been an outstanding weekend of a track and field and what has been um, a, a formidable hosting by the Grenadians of the Carifta Games here in 2024. Yeah, it's right. been such a great meet. The 3 the 14, results. 23, really the time to beat there. Yeah, so 3 10 58, what the Jamaicans did. Guyana second, 3 14 05. Grenada 3 14 23. Those are the times holding medal positions at this stage. Let's see what Trinidad and Tobago, Bahamas, and Antigua can do in this second section. That's what we're calling it now. Section two of the under 20 boys 4x4 final. But well, those a, fans a, a are still. Timed stayed. final. Well, the fans know that they still have uh, to hear who wins the Austin Sealy Trophy. They know they want to see the athletes, as tired as the athletes might be, they're going to come out and parade at the conclusion of. Uh, the final event. I think some of the athletes would already have had their bags packed and ready to come out with their pom poms and uh, showcase themselves on the track here. But we've all been kept up a little bit. Officials conferring. And I must say, I think this is going to be one of the most difficult decisions to make, read the Austin Sealy Award winner, because although I've gone with Michelle Smith, I must admit that I wouldn't have a problem if Javante Smith won, if Janae DeGans won. It's, it's probably one so of the most quality. even fields that we've had. There's not been any one standout athlete at these games. There's been quality up and down the board. Tremendous performance by Brenton Van der Poel in the pole vault. Yes, 5.30 meters. By a long way, the best in Carifta history. We've had a pole vault Austin Sealy Award winner before. Kunst out of Curacao, in Curacao, set the record on that occasion, trains in Europe, in the Netherlands. Well, we're in Grenada. I don't think there are any Grenadians in the hunt this time. Last time, Anderson Peters. Oh, I don't think last time that... Now, now that was a clear-cut winner. <laughs> Anderson Peters was just about as clear-cut a winner as you could get. I agree. At home, in front of a, a capacity crowd, in little Finland. I agree. Setting a Karifta record, brilliant, brilliant performance, and then he would go on from strength to strength at the senior level in the hunt this year. Yeah, I was here at Karifta 2015. 16. 2016, sorry. That was my third Karifta Games. Montego Bay 2011, the first one I attended, and then St. Kitts and Nevis in 2015. Thoroughly enjoyed St. Kitts and Nevis in 2015, Grenada 2016. You'll remember 2011, that famous chase down. <laughs> I, I tell you a story, right? So 2011 in Montego Bay, I probably don't even remember the famous chase down. And I tell you, what, well, which of the famous chase downs are you talking about? 200? under 17 boys with uh, Michelle Sedenio out of Trinidad and Tobago up against Javon Minzi. That's the one. Yes. The well, great Minzi. Well, what I remember from that is Sedenio saying in his interview, don't celebrate before you cross the line. <laughs> but I tell you something about 2011 quickly before we get to this race. It was my first Carifta Games. I was working for a local radio station, KLAS Sports Radio. So I'd never mm -hmm. experienced Carifta before. And where the commentary position was, was immediately above the Bahamians. And uh, listen, about I, I actually started with a cold. And I lost my voice completely. Because you had to combat. Yes, by, by midway the opening day. By the 100 semifinals on the Saturday afternoon, they had to take me off the radio 
because nothing was coming out. And I was shipped back to Kingston the next day and replaced by my good friend, my boss at the time, Roger Haspel. Cowbells and vuvuzelas, hard to overcome. It was a terrible experience. I thought my voice would never come back. Section 2 of the under 20 boys, 4x4, Antigua Barbuda, Trinidad and Tobago and Bahamas. And they are off and running. 3.10.58 set by the Jamaicans, 3.14.53, the third place time in Section A. Let's see what these boys deliver in Section B. A lot of fans still very much here at the Kirana James Athletic Stadium. And still cheering these young men on. Trinidad and Tobago with a fine start. Antigua and Barbuda with Gardner running well in lane number one. Bahamas coming through well. Pretty close at the first change. Antigua, Barbuda, Trinidad and Tobago and Bahamas. The Antiguans on the inside going out pretty slowly on this second leg and you really want to get out. They'll still have the lead though, I think, down the back stretch. Trinidad and Tobago right in there as well. Trinidad and Tobago with a very classy group, but the Bahamas not to be discounted. Jaden Clement running the second leg for Trinidad and Tobago. Bahamas in second, Antigua and Barbuda in third. It's all about times here in this 4x4. Zion Shepard on this second leg for the Bahamians. But Clement hands over first for Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidadians looking good for a medal here at this stage. That is for sure. Down the back stretch they go on this third leg. Trinidad and Tobago with Deshaun Lezama. 200 meters to go. Antigua and Barbuda going ahead of the Bahamas here. Trinidad and Tobago running really well for a medal. 3.14.23 is the bronze medal time at the moment. 3.14.05 the silver. Grenada very much on the chopping block here. Bahamas rallying down the home stretch on this penultimate leg. Lezama I... hands over first for Trinidad and Tobago. I'm not sure how much the crowd would be celebrating if I don't they think understood any the situation. <laughs> and I think they very much understand the situation. Well, I, I don't think they understand where Grenada is in relation to what is taking place on the track right now. Very much on the chopping block, 200 meters to go. Trinidad and Tobago out front. Bahamas in second position. We're watching the clock closely. This is what you called timed finals. We've already seen section one. Oh, this is dramatic. The Bahamians are coming forward as well. They will be in the mix. Trinidad and Tobago ahead of Bahamas. Antigua and Barbuda out of it. This is going to be a really fast time. This could be even a gold medal run. This is going to be tight. 3-11-0-6. That will be good enough for silver and bronze. <laughs> For Trinidad and Tobago and Bahamas, the Jamaicans hold up at 310.58 for the gold. It wouldn't be Carifta without this type of drama. I do think my heart can take. <laughs> it has to, Terry. It has to. There's no other way. But a fantastic run there by both teams. Trinidad and Tobago just about holding on for what eventually will be a silver medal. The Bahamas coming, charging through, pressing them. And when they came around the bottom bend, I looked at the time and I saw them coming very close to that 3.10.58 for gold, which would have kept us, I think, certainly in the production room until late into the night. You know what is ironic about this Terry Finisterre? We spoke about this on our way back to the hotel earlier today, and we said it was likely that something like this would happen with the 4x4 at the Carifta Games, and it would keep us here for an extra hour and a half or two. Well, I, I don't know if we thought that something like this would happen. 
but uh, certainly a dramatic moment at the Karifta Games. Nonetheless, it must be said, fantastic performance by these two groups of young men to be able to pull off this effort half and a half, half an hour after having done it. The first time, closing ceremony, already setting up on the field. Wow. Just wow. We are finally over, but of course it's going to be down to the officials and the team management to sort out uh, the debris and uh, figure out what happens in this 4x4 four four final. I don't think the Bohemians know it yet, but seems as if they'll have the bronze medal, Antigua and Barbuda out of medal contention. Well, the times haven't come up on the screen, and in fact, it's, it's quite possible that Antigua and Barbuda may have been somewhere in the region of the teams who did get medals, who did get minor medals. Yeah, doesn't matter because we know that Jamaica at 310, 55, 58. Clear of the field. And then Trinidad and Tobago and Bahamas would take the other two medals. But yes, you want to wait on confirmation. And I think that these lactic. boys are awaiting confirmation. Oh. They've put in a shift and then gone to overtime. That lactic is going to do a number on these boys. Hotel pool perhaps later? For a second there, I was wondering if you were talking about the athletes or us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there is confirmation now. 311.10 for Trinidad and Tobago. 3. 11.18 for the Bahamas, so they, they will get silver and bronze, Antigua and Barbuda, 314.58, so not far off the medalists, well, the second and third teams in the first heat of two. So Jamaica will take the gold. Trinidad and Tobago holds on for silver. They celebrate now after finally seeing confirmation on the screen. I think our only real regret, Ricardo, that we didn't get to see a true head-to-head -head battle between those three teams. 310-583-1103-1118. You don't get much closer than that in the 4x4. And had they been able to run genuinely against one another, I think the outcome would have been far more interesting. Yeah. The Bahamians uh, finally get to celebrate this time. So do the Trinidadians. Can't wait to see the pick for the Austin Seeley Award. So many fine candidates. Will be one of the toughest decisions yet, that's for sure. But we do have a number of new Carifta records. And I just want to make the point as well that when it comes on to the Austin Seeley Award, there is no specific criteria. None at all. And so it really does come down to the officiating team in, in terms of the adjudicators and how they feel about the performances and the impact that each individual athlete would have had 